Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm going to talk about drill bit boxes. I posted a video on an Irwin bit box a long time ago. 50 Guitar asked me some questions about it and I asked if he needed some more detailed pictures. He said, sure, that'd be great. Well, when I tried to send them, they're of course too large to go through an email and it caused all kinds of problems. This little screw is inserted through that hole. And what that's for, it runs against this panel here and stops the drawer from swinging open completely. Now, I don't know if this is an original thing or somebody put this in there because it's seen better days. It's fitted pretty well into that. And if you don't bang at it too hard, seems to hold up okay, but it's not a very robust method. The box itself is 11 and a half inches long by four and a half inches deep. With the lid closed, it's three inches high. It has a latch on this end and a latch up there, but on mine, the clasp part of the latch is missing on both places. These two little bumps here, I believe, are just wear spots so that it doesn't rub on that when it's uh, laid on its face. The hinges are held in place by six nails, three on each leaf, and this little pin that slides in and out. It's not captured in there very solidly. And it can actually slide out with very little effort. The inside of the box I think you can see see the screw that stops the drawer from coming out completely. It just doesn't look like a very elegant solution to a problem. These holes in the end are where the auger bits have been banging on that end. And they've worn a spot into the end of the box. Now this box didn't come with the proper Irwin bits in it. I put in Irwin bits in all the slots except for this one. And this one. It's hard to tell who made these bits. But this normally would be flipped the other direction if it was an Irwin bit. The shank of the auger bit has been chewed up by the brace that they used. They uh, gripped it out on the shank. Now, either they used a brace or they grabbed it with a pair of pliers. This is an example of the Irwin bit stamping. The 16 stamped into the tang means that this is a one inch auger bit. It's 16 sixteenths. And the number reads with the tang in the upright position. To read the stamping on the shank, you have to have the auger bit with the cutting edge up. And the stamping quite often is obliterated. The writing on the label says that it contains one each, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. That's the number designations for the auger bits. Those are all in sixteenths. So if the number of the auger bit is 16, it's a 1 inch. If it's the number on the auger bit is 7, it's a 7 sixteenths. Pretty simple. It says it has one 6 inch screwdriver bit. This is a 5 inch screwdriver bit. The box came with a countersink in it. Label says it was patented October 21st, 1884. Improved April 10th, 1887. Charles H. Irwin, patentee. It's a beautiful box. They've got an inlay on both ends. Now mine's been beat up pretty hard. You can tell it's been used. I'm not going to do any serious cleaning on it. I might wipe it down a bit. I've had it for years and I, I haven't really done anything with it at all. I kind of like it the way it is. I did manage to find enough Irwin bits to fill it with the exceptions that I've already mentioned. But it's a cool box. The next one we'll talk about is the Irwin Bohr case. This one was owned by somebody who actually used them. Showing a lot of wear. Been beat up pretty badly. I actually got this one to get the numbers off of it so that I could build one. But I haven't got around to it. This will be the next one in the series that we'll talk about. This is one that I kept for my own use. I sold the better of the two that I had. And I kept this one. We'll go into that one after we do the bore case. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.